Mobile games. They're extremely simple games that you play in your phone. And it just so happens that I've been getting into game development lately. So I wanted to make a popular video game. The thing is though, I have one tiny little problem. I'm really bad at making games. And so to get past this obstacle, I decided I would remake famous mobile games, but um, uh, in only one week. All right, so the challenge is pretty simple. I have to remake three mobile games in the span of only one week. And so knowing that the short deadline would be tough, I settled on making Flappy Bird as my first game. Now you're probably saying to yourself, bruh, it's Flappy Bird, you should be able to finish this in like five minutes. And I really wish you were right, but my big brain had the incredible idea of making every single asset on my own. So this sent me down the rabbit hole of learning how to make pixel art. And surprisingly, it wasn't too difficult. But uh, now it's two days into the challenge and all I had was assets and models but no actual game. And so I actually began the journey of starting on the functionality of the game. Now, how these games actually work is that everything is moving towards you. So I'm, um, you're not actually flying there. I'm sorry, bud. So I started working on a script that moves things towards you. And it was pretty simple to do. All you have to do is make a speed variable and then just add some words to the object and you just clicked off the video. I all right, since most of you have the attention span of a goldfish, I'll dumb it down to the bare minimum for you, all right? All you have to do is reference the object and then apply some force to that guy. Now you just set the pipe as a trigger, make it into a prefab, and boom, you got some pipes moving towards it now. But this is where it starts to get a little bit tricky. You see those pipes? They're appearing in the same exact spot every time and probably overheating your nasty uh. Cheeto finger covered iPad because it's generating like a billion pipes. So to fix this issue, I made the pipes randomly spawn in a part of the Y axis and then deleted the pipes after they passed the screen. It's pretty easy. And um, that's pretty much Flappy Bird. All I did was add a quick score system and a death screen and I was done. Now, after making Flappy Bird, I got really confident for some reason and decided that my next game would be a guard.io. All right, just let me explain what I was thinking here. So everybody knows those random.io games that were insanely popular in 2016. And because of that, I did a quick Google search on which one of these .io games are the most popular. And wouldn't you guess it, it was a guard.io. And so that led me to choose a guard.io to make as my next game. All right, now I'm gonna be straight up with you. This was such a dumb idea to do this game. Game. Most of the days of this challenge were spent making this stupid game because of all the problems I ran into. You'll just see, alright? Anyways, I had no clue where to start on making my game. So I looked up a tutorial on YouTube and I actually found one. And it was going really well. That was until I had to implement the feature where you grow bigger by eating the circles. And um, yeah, the tutorial just straight up did not work. And after digging a little bit deeper, I realized that this was because the tutorial I watched was literally just a really bad ripoff of someone else's tutorial. Anyways, after that, I found a tutorial by Zyg on how to make the game, um, but correctly. And after implementing some movement and making some collider scripts, I had a very raw but functional game that randomly generates circles that when gone over with the player, make the player bigger and the circle disappear. And the random generation was pretty easy. All it was was spawning a prefab on a random space for the player every second or so. Now it was time for the fun stuff like adding score, high score, main menus, and- Wait a second. Bruh, I forgot to make the game mobile compatible. Well, let me just change the platform real quick and then I can just get straight back to- Yep, so apparently my game is not compatible with mobile whatsoever, and because of this, it completely corrupted the entire game file. Whenever I tried to fix it, it didn't work, which meant I had to restart the entire project all over again. So, for like the third freaking time now, I restarted the project. Bro, at this point, I basically had the steps memorized, but after a couple hours, I had movement randomly spawning food, and the ability to grow bigger from the food all in the game again. And so after this, I followed a quick tutorial on how to make the score increase using Unity's UI system, and boom! I had a working score system. But um, hold up, this game kinda needs a menu. It shouldn't be too big of a problem, let me just throw one together real quick, come in. Okay, it's not the prettiest, but it gets the job done, okay? I really just wanted to be done with this game. Now you might be asking, bro, where are the enemies? This is only like half the game. I mean, you could have at least tried a little bit, like bro. And my response to that is I have no idea how to do that, and I only have one day left of the challenge, so politely, please shut up. Now, speaking of having one day left, I need to literally speed run the last game. So I had no idea what to do for my last game, so I called up my friend for some suggestions. Hey man, so I'm like doing this thing where I make a game and uh, I don't know what to do for the last game. What do you think I should do? <coughs> Chrome Dino game. Alright, so I guess I'm making the Chrome Dino game. Is that even a mobile game? 
Sorry, my bad. I'm remaking Steve Widget game. Great game, by the way. All right, so like I said, I only have one day left to complete the game. So obviously I'm gonna make my own models for the entire game. So I opened up Photoshop and got started. Wait a second. All right, guys, so after an hour, I got all my assets done and I'm actually pretty proud of these. They're pretty good. Huh? Anyways, after that, I need to get started on the player physics, which sort of sounds difficult, but it's most literally turning on the rigid body, adding a box collider, and then making a script that adds velocity to the player when they hit the space bar. And now Dino Man has some jump mechan- Wait, what the fuck? Alright, after adding a cooldown to the jump, we now have some nice jumping. Alright, next thing I need to do is randomly spawn obstacles, which is literally almost the same thing as Flappy Bird. All it is is making a spawner that spawns one of these seven prefabs every one second or so. Now, the game breaking process is actually going really well, and Life must have hated that, because right after adding this feature, I closed out Unity too quick, and it didn't register the save I made. I, I think you can see where this is going. And so I opened up my project to be greeted with something you never want to see in your life. The corrupted error. I tried so desperately to fix the project, but it was no use. All of my scripts were corrupted and unusable. And so I had to restart my game for like the 16th freaking time in this video. <laughs> okay, so after I restarted the game, after a couple hours, I was finally caught up. Now, right now, you kind of just phase through all the obstacles, which is pretty boring. So I made a quick script that kills you whenever you enter the obstacles colliders. Okay, now I wanted to add crouching so bad to the game so you could dodge the pterodactyls flying above you. And so I did just that. Wait, what the fuck? All right, so never mind about the crouching thing. It, it just doesn't work. Okay, so after that pure sadness, I decided to just polish up the game, like adding a death screen, making some score, and then finally adding high score to the game. But this is when I realized my game was missing a vital mechanic in Chrome Dino- I mean Steve. And this missing feature was sound effects. So I added some audio sources, made some scripts, and boom. You get the jump sound effect when you jump, the death sound effect when you die, and that amazing dopamine rushing sound effect when you reach 100 score. Bro, I love this sound effect so much. And with that, prehistoric browser runner was done. I finished the challenge. Three games in one week. Also, these games are not available to play right now because I really want to get this video out, but if they are, there'll be a link in the description or the comments. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate the support. We gained like 200 subs from like one video. So yeah, if we can get like 500 by the end of the year, that'd be pretty cool. Anyways, follow my socials, like the video, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.